Okay, now, looking at what we set up, we created duotone shadows in the last video. Quite a few of them. I'm still kind of cutting them out. If we look at just what those shadows are on their own, you see how they're kind of cut up all across the image. And I still want to, and we add our, our flat color underneath. And our line art on top. So I still want to keep cutting out. I'm going to turn off the gray background. And on this side, I'm just going to do kind of a big, fairly geometric shape. Or I'll mimic the shadow of the tree. Let's see, how do I want to do this? Yeah, like there's a cast shadow on the tree. Then I want to cut out the highlights in the tree. Bring it all down. Then I want to keep some of the shadows in this darker tree. And then keep some shadow here in the overhang and in this overhang. Let's try that. Just cutting away. And you see over all those different textures, it will give me the, the shadows. Right here, same thing. Want to cut shape difference away. And then continue that on this wall. And then in these windows. And in this column, and there's so many different ways you can carve up your highlights. And it doesn't mean you have to do it everywhere. This is shading by choice. but just brightening it up in a few spots. Now what happens if you decided you did the wrong flat color underneath? What a terrible thing to realize. Like on this building, which is green because I just never colored it in. Or this window. So I can go back to my local flat color and I can unlock it and I can still replace that. with colors that I think might be appropriate. But then, of course, my duotone shadows are going to be different too, right? So I now have to color it on two layers. But it's not the worst thing. So you want those duotones or those flat colors to be complete in the first place. before you add duotone on top of it. All right, there's just the duotones of the pads and this gazebo. I'll brighten those up a little. That should probably be a different color. But we're getting there. Okay, so now we're in some areas where maybe the, the hard edge do a tone is not the only way to go. Maybe I want a little bit of soft variation. So let me finish up these last hard edge shapes. I'm just lassoing them out. Okay. 
like so. So I love Hard Edge. I'm a big animation fan. It's nice to give a little pop to everything. The blades of grass, I can give it a little highlight. Sometimes you need a softer gradation. And I think I need that in some of the shadows around the gazebo, right? So there's a few ways you can play with soft edge duotone. Now that I've done all the hard edge tones, I want to save my work, right? <clears throat> and it's a little saturated. Everything's a little intense. But remember, that can always be modified just with your image tools. I can at any time go to hue saturation and I can take my duotones and I can just desaturate them a little bit so those shadows are a little less colorful. Or I can make them more intense. Right, so right now I'll keep them fairly strong. I can also just change the hue of the duotones. But that's getting into full spectrum color. And that's when you change the colors within the local color instead of just lights and darks. But there's so much you can do if you have them separated out in their layers. So soft edge do a tone. Let me turn off my do a tone shadows that were hard edged. I'm going to duplicate it again, my flat colors. I'm going to lock my flat colors. And there's a really easy way to do soft edge duotone. First, I'm going to take my flat colors, my duplicate, and I'm going to make them brighter. So the opposite of what I did before. And so I'm going to shift it to the left, and that basically adds white to all of my flat colors. I'm going to label that duotone highlights. Now I'm going to take my duotone shadows. These are my hard edged. I'm going to duplicate that, turn off the one underneath it, and make that copy and call it soft. So how do I soften a hard edge? I said it was very easy. And now that I have those really bright highlights behind, it's really obvious where the shadows are. So what I do is I take that duplicate of my hard edge duotone shadows, and I go to filter, and this is the only filter I want you to, to know for this class that I require you to know. You go to filter and then blur and then Gaussian blur. This is the way to soften hard edges in Photoshop. Then you can control the radius and you can soften out those edges. You can see it on the brick wall. You decide how much. It almost becomes like adding water to watercolor. So this is kind of an all over soft edge duotone. This is the hard edge duotone underneath. And some surfaces might want soft edge, some might want hard edge. So now what I can do is I can delete away from the soft edge to reveal the hard edge underneath. Or I can even just play with blending modes and see what I like, like pin light. It does very, very little, but it softens it just a little bit. Ooh, I like that. The dissolve. So that nicely softens it. See all that nice noise in there? Beautiful. That's that's for my taste anyway. Now ones that I didn't do any variation on, that I just left as flats, are kind of
kind of those the glowing effects at the back. And now if I want to do um, full spectrum color, I can take those duotone shadows, duplicate them, and I can go to my image adjustments and change the color balance overall and push them maybe towards blues. and magentas, especially in the shadows. So this is stuff we learned with compositing. And then for my highlights, remember my duotone highlights, which are a little maybe too strong. I'm going to duplicate that, turn off the what I copied from. I'm going to take the, that color balance and shift it towards, whoops, towards the warms towards yellow and towards red in the highlights and midtones. So now all of a sudden the colors are really extreme here. And you'll see that the grass is not just two versions of green, it's yellow and green. The buildings are not just red, they're like purple and pink. This is what's called full spectrum color. And we see that in the examples, in the slides, when color goes a little crazy. And it's easy to overdo it, especially with black outline. The last thing I want to show is you can obviously modify it entirely. Once you get into full spectrum, really anything goes. So one, one easy way is to do kind of texture overlays and to bring in outside elements. So I'm going to be talking about Rizzo printing later. So I'm going to bring in, or Rizzo printing and color separation, so I'm going to bring in this sample of just cyan, magenta, and yellow as a Rizzo graph, and I'm just going to overlay it on everything, like so. So there it is on top of everything. And then I can use a blending mode to layer that into my coloring in different ways. It's like street art. And then of course I can play with the opacity of that. How that hits everything. I can also play with its it's levels, right? So if I rasterize it by right-clicking on it, I can play with its hue saturation, because it's just cyan, magenta, and yellow. And I can shift those lots of different ways. And you can see how that's changing the tones throughout all of my coloring in my spot illustration. All right, let's, let's change it from vivid light to, what else did I like? Soft light. That's nice. And then let's take, let's see. So this is with just soft edged duotone. It's kind of nice and earthy looking. I can maybe take the opacity down on my hard edged. And then I can take the opacity down on my highlights, which are pretty darn strong. That's what's giving me so many kind of neonish colors. Yeah. And this to me feels, at least on my computer screen, like a pretty balanced coloring job. I can keep tweaking it. And then if I want to isolate it, the risograph, I can always go to my line art, select the empty space around my EPS, 